Hi, everyone. Welcome. We have a very special conversation to bring to you today as we visit with the Hankinson family, particularly the brothers Peter, Ben, and Casey. And our good friends at 3M are presenting this conversation, which is uh, truly a unique one because the Hankinson family is, I've always called you guys kind of the first family of Golden Gopher Athletics. Now, I know there's a lot of other brothers who played, especially hockey and all, but uh, guys, welcome and thanks uh, for taking the time out to join us here. Thank you, Frank. Thanks, Frank. Well, well, you all three wore the captain's C. You all three won WCHA championships. Uh, you all three participated in the NCAA tournament, but Peter, take us back to you being the first one to come into the family uh, as a hockey player anyway, uh, and some thoughts about your first year with, uh, with Doug Woog. Well, it, it, real quickly, it, uh, it wasn't looking like I was going to be a gopher. I wanted to be a gopher more than anything. And, you know, back then they didn't pull the trigger on scholarships quite as early as they do now. And I know they, they've changed that somewhat, but, you know, I was going into the end of my senior year with, uh, you know, no commitments. And uh, I remember specifically talking with Doug when he did finally offer me a scholarship at the very end, it was Rob Stauber and, and Lance Pitlick and myself were the last three to sign on to that particular year. And Doug said, you know, I just had such a hard time. Uh, I'd watch you in high school out there with Brennan Maley, a, a guy who was, you know, about six, five. And, and you look so, you look so little. Meanwhile, he's telling me this and, and his eyes are about at my chin. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I can't remember if I, I probably didn't say it seemed to work out for you, Doug, and I hope it does for me too, but uh, <laughs> the best thing that ever happened to me, and uh, it was really a dream come true to, to be able to know that I was going to play for the university, and then, and then, you know, my time there was better than I ever could have expected it to be. Ben, you came along, you had a little more size than the other two guys. Uh, Casey might argue, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, a little bit. But what was, and, you know, with your dad being a, a great quarterback for, uh, for the U, was football ever in your uh, horizon? Well, if I knew if I was going to be this big back then, I'm a little bigger now, Frank, so I do have <laughs> size advantage on both of them. Um, but, but uh, no, I was set on hockey. They were set on hockey. Peter kind of paved the way I wanted to play college baseball, but I just wasn't good enough. We all want to do something we can't do. Right. And then, yeah. and then I, I figured out that uh, I tried Wisconsin and, and St. Cloud a little bit and, and Peter paved a nice little path to me to the Gulfs and had that same meeting with Wooger and had carved out a little bit of a scholarship to follow in Peter's footsteps. And it was the best thing I ever did by far. Yeah, you know, another thing that was so amazing, I must have been not good at all because Peter and Ben had nice careers. And no, same thing. I remember Doug Wu called me in August after their model camp and said, you know, Casey, I just don't think you're going to play at Minnesota. And this is going into my senior year, which is just crushing because I was, you know, since I was 10 years old, followed them and bled maroon and gold. And I had nowhere to play either. Um, Rob Little is our coach, Eddie Dine, and he tried to get UMD to talk with us, me, and they weren't interested. And I played my whole senior year without anything, nothing. And then they had the old maroon and gold game back in the day where you played out state versus in state. And I had a good tournament or a good couple of games after that. And uh, from that, Wisconsin gave me a partial scholarship and North Dakota, uh, which was great, but Minnesota is where I, I wanted to go. And you know, I will say about Doug Woog, I, I, I said this earlier, is there's people in your lives and then there's people that change your lives. And for me, Doug Woog was one of those change your life kind of guys. I mean, uh, he was just fantastic and he was very good. To, he gave us all an opportunity and Ben and I and Peter all came in with uh, half scholarships or less and, you know, worked our way up and worked hard. But without him giving him that chance, we would never have the great honor of wearing the M. Guys, if you will, take us on campus just a little bit. Uh, I, I know the stories could probably stretch into about four hours, but some of your favorite memories of being on campus, um, and I'm going to start with the most dangerous one. What was your favorite? What was your favorite study spot? And Lance Pitlick's basement is not acceptable. <laughs> Peter, start with you. Well, I would say. I don't know if there was a lot of studying going on there, but the old we, we had a weight room and a little bit of a meeting room called the dungeon, which at that time in you know, the late eighties was actually the old Memorial Stadium football locker room. And Jack Blatherwick, who was our team physiologist, 
I'm saying that right. Is that right? Physiologist. Yeah. Yeah. I think he, he put all, I think it was mostly his equipment in that thing. And, uh, but there was a, there was a study room with a, with a computer in there. And that's where we, we, we kind of went and hung out and uh, just had some great times in there. So that was definitely my favorite spot. Ben, did you do much studying? Yeah, we, I did studying on game seven in 1987. That's right. The Twins won the World Series. I had tickets to the game. My grandpa, God rest his soul, got to go watch the Twins win. I had to go to study hall in Jack Blatherwick's dungeon where Peter just described. It was dingy cockroaches, but we had to do study hall on game seven of the World Series. How crazy is that? That was actually great because I got to take your place. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, yes. I thought grandpa went. No, you, I went. Oh yep. yeah. So that was a, the, the greatest. And it was an unbelievable game right on the left field line. It was so much fun. Oh. Casey, you came into a brand new building, uh, a little bit of your campus life too. Uh, tell us maybe your favorite dining spot as well. Yeah, this, the study hall, I would say, you know, we, uh, my junior year is when email started, which is hard to believe. Uh, that's when you actually got an email account, your, my junior year. So I was right when the internet started. I would say the Beerman building, uh, for a reason that was a little different than Ben and Peter gave, is you'd go see other athletes. So it was really fun to go hang out with the baseball guys or the football guys or whoever, because they would have their, their same spot. Um, campus pizza would have to be the one for the dining. Uh, that was great. Uh, Annie's Parlor. There was, there was a bunch of good spots at the U. Stub and Herbs. It's great. Yeah. Let's bring this full circle now to the rest of the family. Uh, your, your dad was a an outstanding quarterback in the mid '60s, uh, set passing records galore in his uh, junior and senior seasons, and, and our condolences to you and the rest of your family for his passing uh, late last year. But also now to bring in your mom, Bonnie, who was a, a cheerleader at the U. I mean, it's a perfect cycle when you when you think about uh, kind of a Cinderella story about the way your family came together on this. Uh, we touched a little bit on your dad as a uh, football mentor. Casey, I'm going to go back to you for starters. And how much football conversation did you guys talk about? And what are your memories about your, your dad in your hockey days? Well, first, I was just, I was so lucky to have a mom that was such a big attitude person. That's all she talked about was just having the right attitude. So that was just a great way to grow up. And then my dad, same way, but so humble, uh, always sat in the back seat of the car. Um, never, never, Frank talked about his college career. Never. There's stories. Wow. Uh, we got a call actually on his gravesite from a uh, reporter that told us about a game that he won where he drove the team back and he won the game in the final minutes and none of us had ever heard that story uh which was is a really endearing quality that he had he never talked about himself ever and uh you know one short story is i remember not being able to go to the university of minnesota like i talked about earlier uh being a senior and you know your father is somebody you look up to all the time and part of you thinks man i'm gonna crush his dreams too and I just remember he said, Casey, if, if you go to school and you're a student at, the, at college and that's what you want to do, I'll support you 100 percent. And and uh, that's just fine. And at that age, when you're so influential, it's pretty amazing to have somebody not put any more pressure on you than I already had being the youngest of two great yeah. brothers at the university. So incredibly sad that he's not with us anymore, but I couldn't be more grateful to have him as a dad. Uh, just so many life lessons. Peter, if I could lead you into uh, this conversation with this, um, Bill McGrain wrote this in the Minneapolis Tribune about, about your dad. Uh, it says, this lean senior brings a poise bordering on dignity to the quarterback position. And I always thought you could, you could take that quarterback position out of that sentence and you can drop in just about any other description or position uh, about your dad because he brought that, that uh, dignity to just about everything in life. Some thoughts about your dad. He did. And, uh, you know, what Casey said was exactly my experience with him as well as, you know, his first kid. And, you know, he just, he uh, provided opportunities for us, but never, never pushed, you know, so he wasn't a hockey player, although Willard Eichelet was his sixth grade uh, physical education teacher and tried to convince him he should, he should be playing hockey and uh, his, his, his actually his, his greatest sports memory uh, in his words was playing intramural hockey goalie, uh, which is interesting. And I don't know, you know, if that led to, 
you know, him building a rink for us when we were in the early days and growing up in St. Louis park. Um, and he, you know, he'd play goalie at all hours, but he was just remarkable in that, um, you know, win, lose, or draw in any game, you never got uh, any, you should have done this or should have done that in the car ride home. Um, he was the coach on almost all of our teams early on. And uh, yeah, just uh, just a fantastic dad. And, uh, you know, we're going to miss him like crazy, but he was a, a great influence. Ben, I think maybe you brought a little more teeth to the game than, than your dad. How did he react to that? And what was it like being his son? <laughs> I think Peter and Casey summed it up pretty good. Yeah, I, I, I had to do something different to uh, get the attention that uh, Peter did on the ice. And I'll never forget when he said, are you sure you want to go to the U? Peter's got a good thing going. You better not screw this thing up. And uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, he, he, uh, I think, you know what, he, he was a guy that knew that you had to reach into that toolbox, whatever you had and, and pull out that tool that's going to help you. And I, I, I mean, he didn't, uh, he didn't say too much, to be honest, when I would probably take a really stupid penalty, I'd hear it from Moog and the coaching staff, but, um, you know, he, he knew, you know, what buttons to push or, or really not say anything. Guys, I want to just uh, wrap this up very quickly. Uh, Casey, I was with uh, standing next to your mom and dad in Duluth and uh, I believe it was in 89. Uh, and the last game that one of the Hankinson boys would play go for hockey at, and I, the, the forget the outcome of the game, which was not in the Gophers favor and overtime loss up there. But to, to think that I was there for both the first and the last game uh, that the Hankinson boys played and to see the look on your mom and dad's face I knew how special this whole program meant. And, and I'm just um, thrilled and honored to be on a first name basis with you guys. And thanks so much for joining us on this, on this Gopher Talk presented by 3M. Guys, good luck the rest of the way. And we'll celebrate some more next year when the 101st anniversary of Gopher Hockey comes around. Thanks, yeah, Frank. Frank. Great to be with you. So Thank fun. You. Thanks, thanks Frank. for all you've done, Frank. It wouldn't be the same without you and Wally too. Thanks, Benny. Appreciate it. All right. And to that, folks, we will say, Go Gophers.